let's take a moment and have another look at division. Remember that division didn't always work for us in the whole numbers. Sometimes in the whole numbers, we had a remainder. But let's look again at that understanding that we had of division. Let's think again about the whole number division problem, 12 divided by 3. We understood this as an answer to a question. A question that this might possibly answer would be, if I want to share 12 cookies among three people, how many cookies should each person get? And the way that we imagine doing this, right, we're taking 12 cookies, divided three people, and we'll get a number of cookies per person. How many? Well, we'll give each person a space, and then we'll share out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve cookies. And we see that each person gets four cookies. Coming as no surprise, twelve divided by three is four. And in that case, whole number division worked out for us, no problem. But let's consider another example. Suppose I want to share three pizzas among eight people. How many pizzas will each person get? Well, three pizzas divided by eight people will give us the number of pizzas per person. Looking at this, it's pretty clear that there are not enough pizzas for each person to have one. Right, there are not enough pizzas to just give a pizza to everyone. Hmm. Well, one of the options that we talked about for handling remainders was to just, you know, be as even as possible. So we could give three of the pe people an entire pizza each, and then nothing to the other five. That doesn't sound like a good idea. I think that those other five people are not going to help me move again, right? Those other five people are going to be mad at. None of our other options for handling remainders fares any better, right? We could also buy more pizzas, but that would make this a different problem. Or we could just not give anyone any pizza and throw them all away. That's no good. Right now, all eight of the people are mad at me. Of course, none of those is what we do in real life. What do we do in real life? We cut up the pizzas. And the simplest way to do that is, well, to cut each pizza into eight pieces. And then, how many pieces do we give everyone? We give everyone three pieces. One note about the eight pieces that we cut it into, right, not just any old eight pieces, right, if we want to split this fairly, the eight pieces have to be all the same size. So what does that look like? Right, here are my three pizzas. We'll pretend I was successful in getting those all circular and all the same size. We cut each one into eight equal pieces. And then the simplest way to imagine giving everyone three pieces is we give everyone a piece of the first pizza, a piece of the second pizza, and a piece of the third pizza. How do we describe this number then? Well. It's not three, right? We're not giving each person three pizzas. We're giving each person three pieces of such a size that it takes eight to make up 
a pizza. So let's take a look at this number. What does it mean to have this fraction of a pizza? Well, we would read this as three-eighths of a pizza. Notice eighths. Notice the ordinal number again. Right, so not eight. Eighth. What does it mean to have three eighths of a pizza? Well, it means to have three pieces of such a size that it takes eight of them to make one whole pizza. So one eighth is just one such piece. It's just one piece sized so that it takes eight of them to make a pizza. And then when we say we have three eighths, we simply mean that uh, we have three such pieces. So that's where we come up with this notion of a fraction. In the next video, we'll make this notion a little bit more precise, and we'll think about it in other terms.